The number one thing that I hear from 3D artists about Gen AI workflows is that they want to control what they want to control and they want generative AI to take care of the tedious stuff or the stuff that they don't want to deal with. And I totally agree on the exact same way. So today I'm extremely excited to show you a brand new workflow that was just released today from the Adobe Substance 3D team inside the software stager. And what you're going to see is the foundation, the backbone of the beginnings of this process where you're going to be able to do what you want to do in 3D. Generative AI is going to take care of the stuff you don't want to deal with. And you can ultimately make the images that you want faster with creative control and all the other things that you want. So without much further ado, uh, let's get into it. All right, so here we are inside a Substance 3D Stager. This is the new version, version 3.1. You'll see that we have this lovely welcome screen that shows us a little sneak preview of what we're gonna be talking about today. We can generate images with 3D guide objects. I'll explain what that means throughout the demo. We can text to 3D, so text prompts will create actual polygonal 3D objects. And I'm hoping it's not just chairs. We'll test it. Wouldn't it be crazy? If the release was just that, you could text prompt 3D chairs. It'd be crazy. Anyway, I doubt that's it. Also, improved match image lighting. This is Substance 3D Stager's ability to take a 3D object and a backplate and being able to integrate the lighting of the 3D object so it looks like it matches the backplate along with the camera settings and all that good stuff. And then we've got the other enhancements, which basically include things like the ability to move around an object using these handy little widgets which is super helpful if you are working on a trackpad. So a nice little update to Stager in that, as well as this contextual guide bar that that's in a bunch of other Adobe apps that you'll find down here as well. But the main thing, the kind of the start of the show, everything that was handled in individual topics, not just other enhancements, occurs down here in this little magical generate tab. So we'll go ahead and uh, expand that up here so you can see that. So you'll see three things. Again, text to 3D, we'll talk about that. This is text to 3D objects. You got text to background, that's creating images for camera backgrounds and compositing in your 3D object. And then the, the 3D model to image is just about you know creating some images based on your 3D models. So let's talk about each one here. Let's get into it and we'll kind of show some use cases. So start simple and then work, work our way up to some, some complexity. So for this, I just wanna start by showing that you can actually use this idea to just take some simple primitives and turn those into pretty dynamic images that you can control. So let's do that first. Now this is a demo I've done before, but I wanna show you how this new stuff can build upon it. So I'm just gonna use this contextual bar down here. I'm just gonna start by adding a cube. We're going to go ahead and make it short and wide to be like a, and what we're doing is making like a little wooden bar to put a cocktail on. All right, cool. So we got a little wooden bar here. I will go ahead and create a new object as well. Go ahead and just throw a cylinder on here as well. All right, cool. Now we take camera, spin it around, set it up. Actually, let's create a camera by hitting this plus camera button up here at the top. We can control our output size. We'll just keep it 1920 by 1080 for now. Jump back into our generate button and we'll start here at the bottom and say, I wanna take these models and I wanna turn them into the, the start of an image. So we'll say cocktail, on a wooden bar. We'll just start with that. Now, this next one, these are guide objects. This is telling it which one of my 3D objects in my scene do I actually wanna to use to guide this? And you're just gonna basically get this picker and you can select what objects you wanna use. Now you'll see up here in the upper right, this little icon pops up that says, uh, these are your generative guides. You can either enable that or disable that in the layer stack up here in the scene stack as well. But once we've got our objects enabled, we can go ahead and say, all right, cool, you know. Oh, also a super handy match color. So if you've developed some color schemes in there that you want to keep in your generative AI image, it will match that color. I'll show you that in a little bit as well. Also, all of the settings here. So if we wanted it to be a photograph and, you know, concepts, of course, I want it to be beautiful. I don't know why anybody would not want it to be beautiful. So let's go ahead and select that. All right, let's generate it up. All right, cool. So immediately we've got four images here of a cocktail on a bar. And it's exactly in the position that we want. So again, we can control the camera angle, we can control the aspect ratio, we can control the focal length of the lens. Amazing, right? Super cool, super easy. 
um, super dynamic. So I, like, again, I can take this, shift this over the right, generate more, and it will generate based on the new position of this stuff. Super cool. I also mentioned in other examples how you can not only use simple primitives like this, but you can jump into the Substance 3D Asset Library and grab any one of the 3D models. You know, I, I've done sushi in the past, cactuses, whatever. You can do lots, you can do any variation of the hundreds or thousands of models that are in there. But the question starts to come up is like, what do I do if the model doesn't exist? Or if it's something specific, or like, I just wanna make something very quickly. That's where the text to 3D model comes in. So let's go back and let's talk about this text to 3D. So let's say I've got this, it's a lovely little rocks glass, but I actually want a martini glass. And I actually don't know if, I assume that the Substance Asset Library has a martini glass, but if it doesn't, no worries, I can just type in martini glass here. And what this does is this automatically, this, this generates 3D, a polygonal 3D object, which you can add to the scene. And just like the other Firefly stuff, it'll give you four iterations so I can kind of hover over them. And the nice thing is they give you some turntable type of renders for this. So I can just go ahead and take one of these and I will just drop this in my scene here. The scale is always off. It's always like massive. So you'll just have to scale it down into place. So I'll just go like make it little at first and then we'll kind of fumble it up. So say it's about that size. So now I can go back into my 3D model to image I will select this object as well and make sure that it is highlighted there. Awesome. And then I can say martini and cocktail on a wooden bar. And as you can guess, now that we've got that object in there, it will generate a new image with this martini glass. Awesome. So now we got some martinis back there, a little Manhattan action. Love it. And away we go. So that is the first kind of use case of it. But the one thing that I mentioned at the top of this was like, okay, this is awesome that I can use 3D objects to kind of guide this stuff around. But like, that's not what I do as a 3D artist often. As a 3D artist, I want to create things in 3D and then I want to build an environment for them. I want to create my hero elements exactly as I want, right? And so for this workflow, I'm going to show you something that's also a part of this, but slightly different. So let's go ahead and start with a fresh, clean scene. And for this scene, I am going to grab a couple of objects that I've made in past tutorials. Again, I will link those down below. So it's the coffee tutorial that I did, and I just exported them out of Painter as USDZ files. So I can grab these USDZs, this is a coffee cup, and a coffee bag. Awesome. So again, Let's say these are my brand. Let's say that these are the things, the exact things that I want. And I want to put them in like a lifestyle image as well. So go ahead and position my coffee cup. Awesome. And my bag of coffee. So these, I want to remain exactly the same. I don't want to change a darn thing about them. But what I want is I want to build a scene around them. Again, let's think about it in terms of what I want to make. I already made these coffee cups exactly in the coffee elements exactly the way I want. Now I want to use generative AI to fill out the rest of the scene. All right, let's do it. We'll start by building in our guide objects. Again, similar process. I'll make a cube, shrink it down. Awesome, because what I'm thinking is I want to put these in like a kitchen. I want to create like a little home kitchen scene. Like these are, there's that Folgers commercial that, oh my gosh, am I old? Is this, is this a me as an old person thing? There used to be Folgers commercials where, you know, people would come home and it was always like warm and cozy and there was soft music playing behind and it was awesome. And anyway, okay, cool. We're going to replicate that. So here's like the table that all this stuff is sitting on, but I want to build out some other coffee elements, right? Like I don't want it to just be this stuff. And again, I can go and go to the asset library and pull in what I want, but let's just say that I'm super lazy and I want to just text to text to create these things. So I'll go back, text to object. I'll say, I want a, you know, metal spoon. Awesome. Let's take a look at these. Cool. Cool. All right. I'll grab this guy. Dragging the seam there. Perfect. All right. So there we go. Giant spoon in the scene. Let's go ahead and shrink that down. And one thing like the spoon is you know, floating off the back. The other thing that's nice about stagers, you can use the collision objects to position this correctly. So I'll just turn on collision for my metal spoon, turn on collision for my cube, bing bong. There we go. Perfect, so I got a metal spoon in there. Uh, let's get a modern coffee pot. 
Ooh, these are kind of cool. Let's grab one of these. I will just drag and drop. We'll place that back behind the coffee cup here. Scale it down. A little bit bigger than that. Hmm. In between. There we go. All right, cool. Use this little dot here to position on top of our table. Ooh. I had it <laughs> positioned to the handle of the cup. It followed that normal. That's not what we want. And we'll go ahead and... Yeah, I don't want the handles to be too parallel. So we'll just... Yeah, we'll just make it like that for now. All right. So the one thing about this generative AI process that I kind of um, didn't mention before, make the table a little bit bigger. Ooh. You know, I'll just go in and make it a little wider. There we go. All right, cool. So the one thing about the, the that process that we haven't discussed yet is this slider around match color, right? So this is matching the color of any of these, these non-hero elements. So like, I like that this coffee pot is a little bit blue, but it's not quite the right blue. Like I, it's not, it's not quite on the level that I want. So let's say I wanted to adjust this it's super easy. I can either go in here, you know, select one of my materials from here and I can drag and drop this on and say, you know, select exactly what color I want it to be from in here. But another option is let's say that it has something on it that you kind of like but you just want to adjust one element of it, I can actually go into the base color of this material, click this little pencil, go, go into the material tabs, click the base color, click the pencil. What will this do? This is going to launch just this material, generate again from a text to image object, and it'll bring the base color into Photoshop. And what it will do is it'll allow me to take whatever blue color that I want um, and I can drop this on top and then actually, oop, that's not what I want. I want to do a new layer, drop this on top. And I actually want to multiply this over. I think that would look great. Yeah. So now I've got this, the black stay black, but my color now changes. And what I want to do is all, and I'll move this over so you can see it quickly. If I click file save, yep, it'll go ahead and update it within stager as well. So it creates a live link there. Awesome. Now, when I go to generate my generative AI object, I can match that up. I can match that as well. So let's go ahead and we will create our camera. Let's do a longer focal length. We'll say it's like a 120 millimeter lens. Awesome. Kind of condense this down again, warm, cozy, inviting space. Amazing. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too much. We'll go an 85 millimeter lens. Awesome. All right. Got this lined up to where I want. Let's go ahead and generate this out. Now, I, what I want to do is I want to slide this match color object up. And we'll go ahead and match it all the way. And what I want to do is I want to pick my objects again. So pick one, two, and the spoon, three. All right, so I'll just double check over here. The cube, which is the table, the metal spoon, and the coffee pot are all good to go. Great. So now I can say uh, mid-century modern home. Spoon, coffee pot. I will say modern coffee pot. We'll just match the, the same thing. So even though they're guide objects, I do like to explain what they are. White countertop, window, cinematic. I always add cinematic. We'll say beautiful again. And we'll add, I always like to add emotional things in here too. So like calm, serene. Awesome. Now, the one thing, the one kind of bugaboo that I've seen in this is if I go back out of this and come back in, I lose my text prompt. So what I tend to do is I'll just highlight this and copy it for now. All right, cool. So I can go to my settings. We will... Let's go to lighting. I don't want dramatic. Eh, we'll keep that pretty much as is. You know, I'll go ahead and I'll just say beautiful for now. As always. I always like it beautiful. All right. Generate it up. And now what we're going to get is we're going to get the, again, the coffee bag. We'll go ahead and turn on the ray trace to see what these actually look like rendered. All right, so we've got some variations in here, but you know what? Let's, uh, let's mix it up a little bit. Like, I like this match color, but let's go ahead and slide that down just to see what the full capabilities of this are. So just know that that is an option that's available to you if you want to keep what you've created then you've got that as well. But let's check this out. All right, cool. So now we've got a white marble table. We got window light. We've got the coffee cup here, but I check this out. 
I want to, I just want to show you this real quick. So I'm just going to rotate the lighting around because again, we can change the lighting in the scene, but I want to show you this. So let's see if this works with this particular one. Actually, let me, let me just shift this over. Okay. This will actually work better. So I want you to notice something. So look at that. Look at the coffee pot here. And I just want you to pay attention to this. So I've got my, I still have my 3d object, right? So I'm going to slide this away from this and I want to slide it back on. Did you, did you notice that it has a shadow on it now? Now, wait a second, this white marble countertop doesn't exist, right? It's a generative AI thing. I am actually able to cast shadow on a generative AI image. Insanity, right? Like pure insanity. So yes, so that is something else that has been added to this that is like not in that feature pop-up, but it took me a second to realize was just like, oh my gosh, like that is actually in there. And now I can change this all around too. Like if I'm like, oh, you know what, cool. Actually the spoon is, you know, like maybe I've got an art director who's like, you know what, I got to get that spoon out of the way. So we'll go and take the spoon and we will slide it back. And then, you know, it's like, this doesn't, you know, quite feel like breakfast enough to me. Uh, so what, what we want is we want actually want to add in a, a bowl of cereal. So this is why I'm going to copy this again. Again, you don't want to jump away and then come back. So I'll text to 3D, say bowl of cereal. Awesome. I can go ahead and take this, drop this in the scene now. Massive ball of cereal. It gets me every time. Every single time I forget that it's going to be massive. All right, there we go. It seems to be like generally a scale of 0.1 kind of matches up, at least for the scene that I'm working in. All right. Oh, don't want to, don't want the cereal to be on that. All right, cool. So we've got that. Let's see where our spoon go. Yeah. So our spoon is, we'll make sure that that is in place here. So it's not intersecting with it too much. All right, cool. All right, that'll work. Now what I can do is I can regenerate this back on that. So if I go back into my text to background, again, lost it, no problem. Copy and paste it back in, regenerate it again. Oh, I forgot to tell that bowl of cereal to be a part of the generation. So I'll just click that, regenerate. That's a cool, so I've got my bowl back there. Breakfast, window light, awesome pot. Still catching shadows, still doing its thing. So again, now we have a generative AI scene. It's catching shadows, it's casting shadows. Well, like, what do I, what do I do with it now? Like, it's still kind of stuck in this. Do I take a screenshot of this? Nope. You can actually go into the render tab, render it out as a Photoshop file. Took a grand total of five seconds to render out. And just like any other stager scene, it will render out a Photoshop file that is layered. So the 3D objects are, are separate from the back plate. You will actually get some mats that will help you select different objects, even again, the generative AI stuff. And we can also continue our work inside of Photoshop here. So I can take this and drag this on and say that I actually want some coffee steam. All right, now I got a little steam coming off my coffee. Amazing. I can go back in and do all my normal Photoshop witchcraft where I can lighten this up, you know, set all my things, make this integrated extra well, add some edge blur, you know, whatever I want to this. And to get back to my point at the beginning, you are starting to see the bones, the framework of what I'm talking about here. Does this have everything that I want? No. Can I control the lighting of the generative AI image? Eh, not so much. Can I create an animation out of this? Nope. But you can see now that with this release of Stager, you can see this kind of starting to form. This idea, again, as the creative individual, if I want to model, texture, paint, unwrap the UV, anything that I want to do to my 3D object, I can still do. And then when I get to the part of the final image where I'm like, you know what? I, I don't want to have to worry about modeling all these other components or doing all this other stuff. Maybe I can let generative AI take that for me the stuff that's a little bit less important, the stuff that's not my hero elements, and I can go from there, all while still having control over it. So again, this is what we're talking about. This is starting to build on this foundation of Gen AI taking care of the stuff that I care less about and letting me focus on the stuff that I care more about. If you have any questions about this, throw them in the comments down below. Like I said, this is the first day of this release. This is literally the first time I've kind of come through this workflow entirely. This is more evidence of me just doing this myself to practice it and recording it for you all. But basically, 
I want to see what this is good at, what it's bad at, keep building images. But if you got questions, you need to know what you need to know, throw it in the comments down below. And I look forward to hearing what you got to say. All right, until next time, everyone, take it easy.